Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got kind of a overview slash presentation slash knife ramble to share with you guys. This is my brand new Knife Center exclusive Hinderer XM24 Harpoon Span so that deployment shaking the entire table. Wow, I love this thing. I love the uh, Harpoon Spanto blade shape in general. This is my XM18 3.5 user. I just love the blade shape. These are thick. These are robust. These are heavy, right? They're expensive. I, I don't really care. I, I just find so much enjoyment from these knives, and I've got a lot of... I got a lot of enjoyment out of carrying this full titanium 3.5 inch. Um, this is actually... The second, well, it's the it's one of two XM24s that I own right now. I kind of want to talk about my, I guess, my idea behind picking this up, why I was drawn to it. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find my Patreon link right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. For anybody who doesn't know, the XM24 <coughs> is the largest knife in the XM series. There's the XM18 3-inch, which, as you could guess, has a 3-inch blade. The XM18 3.5-inch, which is the one that I just showed. It has a 3.5-inch blade. And the XM24 that has a 4-inch blade. The XM24, as they get bigger, the standard size, uh, the standard thickness also increases. So you can see here... We're looking at 165 thousandths on this guy on the spine and 187 thousandths on the spine of the XM24. The titanium is also thicker on the lock side. Um, and I believe uh, the studs look to be maybe about the same size. Maybe they're a little, are they a little tiny bit bigger? Yeah, they look like they're the same size. So anyways, big boy. CPM 20 CV has the... Uh, Triway pivot system in it, as is indicated by that symbol right there. That means it comes with all the hardware you'd need to switch out the pivot internals from bearings to phosphor bronze to nylon, whatever. Pick your poison. You can do whatever you want. This came with a blue G10 scale, which I promptly changed out for this uh, forest green frag pattern while I wait for the final outcome of this knife. This is what I like to call a project knife. So I've got lots of knives. i got lots of inexpensive knives. I've got lots of expensive knives. Some knives I carry, some I don't. Uh, I've got like my um, my Combat Troodon Hellhound that's the same. These are 600 bucks by the way. US made, right? A little more going into these than you know other knives in uh, uh, lesser price ranges with the same materials. Same price on the Hellhound. I like to carry that guy. Uh, my Protec SNG Titanium. Roughly a $500 knife, I like to carry that guy. The XM18 uh, 3.5 inch with the tie scale on it is actually, the total amount that's in this guy is actually more than the 24. Uh, after the tie scale, so about, what would that be? It'd be 625. I like to carry this guy. And here recently, I've actually come to, uh, um, you know, I've come around to carrying the Strider uh, 3 quarter AR, which is also a $600 knife. Um, now, this guy and my other XM24 uh, are not going to get carried, and there's a couple of reasons why. Um, truthfully, and there's not really... A, I'm trying to think how I can say this without sounding like a flexy douche. Um, at this point in the channel, like, I have a monthly budget that I dedicate to acquisitions um, so that I can bring you guys content, and also just to add to my own collection. I'm not saying I can buy whatever I want, but the truth is, is that if I really wanted an XM24 user, I'd either use one of the ones, I guess the light shut off in the middle of the thing here. <laughs> did we, did we unplug? Oh, we did. Anyways, if I wanted to use an XM24, I'd use one of the ones that I've got here. Or if I just wanted to keep this whole project knife thing going, I'd probably just buy another XM24. Um, I've gotten to the point now where the $600 zone doesn't really scare me for use. And that's something that, you know, like I remember uh, picking up my first $200 knife and thinking, wow, this is way too nice to use. Then coming around to that, same thing with my first $400 knife. Wow, this is too, you know, way too nice to use. And uh, climbing up to the $600 mark, you know, I'm at the point now where like if I dropped a grand on a Shira Goroff, I might be kind of, eh, but eventually I'd come around to that. 
I think uh, everybody has the same kind of thing as they climb the ladder. You know, the next most expensive knife that you've ever purchased, you're probably going to be the most reserved with. The most reserved with, and this varies from person to person. But in this territory, nah, I'm past that. In fact, I actually used to EDC an XM24. The one that I carried was, this was before the channel, I had a Spanto, like this guy, but it was a Gen 2. And uh, I bought it to carry. <coughs> bought it off the secondary market, carried it, convinced myself that I'd get used to the size. And I just didn't. A lot of you guys know, you know, what my preference is when it comes to um, size. I've talked about this many times. Um, I like a knife that's big and robust. Feels good, right? I mean, here lately, I've honestly been EDCing the Spyderco Para 3. Um, but like from, you know, like my preferences as an enthusiast, you know, the knives that I'm going to carry. These three right here are excellent. They're about eight to eight and a quarter inches overall. Uh, three and a quarter to three and a half inch blade, right? They're all within that. These, these are all full titanium, these three guys right here. They're all around like six to seven ounces, something like that, which really doesn't bother me. The weight thing has nothing to do with it. Honestly, it's just the overall size. How much it costs and all that, being protective has nothing to do with it at all. Um, it's the size and the fact that it is a project knife. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you have a project car that you're building up. I mean, maybe at some point you plan to drive it. Maybe at some point I plan to use these, but you know, you fix it up in your garage and the whole idea is to kind of build it into something. That's what these are. And I like to keep, keep them perfect while I'm completing these projects. A lot of you guys know the Dark Horse actually started off with a blue and black scale and just standard hardware. I put the uh, black carbon fiber scale on it and I put the blacked out hardware on it. And I'm kind of just waiting, uh, patiently waiting for Rick Hinder to uh, release a XM24 black stone wash titanium scale, which I got to be honest, is pretty unlikely, but that's okay. It's fun to, you know, to dream about it. This guy, in the meantime, um, <coughs> I've got the frag scale on it, but truthfully, I think it's much more likely that if Hinder is going to release a titanium scale, if you don't know, I'm big into full titanium. I just like that. I'm always going to prefer it as an enthusiast. Not that it gives me any sort of specific advantage from a utilitarian standpoint. I just like full titanium, right? Uh, I think it's much more likely if Rick Hinder releases more titanium scales for the XM24, which he has not done in a long time, that a, uh, it's going to be easier for me to acquire a stonewashed one than a black stonewashed one. Um, and I had the means to pick up another one, and this was in my favorite blade shape. So I thought, yeah, sure, you know, I, I definitely want to pick this up and just kind of enjoy it. Um, and that's, that's the thing with these knives or with this type of knife. I've EDC'd an XM24 before, tons of other XMs, right? Uh, and, uh, I'm just past the point where the enjoyment I get from a knife like this is in using and carrying it. I I'm just at the point now, having handled so many, I just kind of like having it. <laughs> and truth be told, I kind of... <laughs> I kind of like that it bothers some people that I don't use all my knives. <laughs> Sorry, I've got some, I've got a little bit of a cough. Um, but yeah, some people get really bent out of shape about that, and I, I think it's funny. Um, the XM24 is just a little bit too big for my day-to-day. -day. You know, and I don't mean heavy. It does, I mean, the difference between this guy at 6.5 ounces and the XM24 at 7.5 ounces, nah, it's nothing. It's the overall size. It's just not super comfortable in my pocket from my day-to-day. -day. My day-to-day -day is pretty simple, right? The stuff that I'm going to cut, cardboard, rope, you know, uh, some friggin' paper, envelope, stuff like that. Um, before I, you know, started working from home, I was working in an office setting. Uh, and, uh, you know, even at the dealership, I was working in an office setting. And it just didn't make sense. I, I tried for three weeks. And it was just too big. Uh, it just it just wasn't comfortable. And uh, the XM18, three and a half inch is probably also too big. But for whatever, I mean, just the smaller size, this is just perfect for me. I really, I, I don't mind the weight on this guy. I carry this one a lot. Same way with the AR, the three quarter AR, just the shorter size just works a little better for me. Now the XM24, I wouldn't get any more enjoyment out of carrying it. Um, it's, I, I just enjoy the idea of building it into something or truthfully completing a, a project that's been in my mind for probably about eight years. The idea of building a full titanium XM24 is, I mean, that's a dream. Uh, those are difficult to, even like to find pictures of a full tie XM24 
is difficult. And I don't mean with aftermarket titanium. I mean with a true, not that there's anything wrong with going aftermarket. I mean, at some point I might actually have to do that if Rick doesn't, you know, make any more XM24 titanium scales. But finding a true from the ranch XM24 titanium scale and a picture of it installed on an XM24 is pretty rare. There's a few of them floating around out there, but it's pretty rare. I mean, I think I've seen maybe one video on YouTube. It's just not something that exists. So it's fun to go after that. But for whatever reason, I, I gain infinitely more satisfaction from having an absolutely pristine knife to um, install these parts on. And then once the project is completed, I mean, that's literally the story with this guy. I bought a, uh, you know, this was the very first run of um, Harpoon Spantos in Gen 6. This is in S35E, and they've done um, some 20 CV, I think. In fact, my brother has one. And I was like, oh, man, that's perfect. I'm going to buy a tie scale for that. It's just going to be my dream knife, right? So I did, and then babied it for a while, and then I ended up selling it to a buddy. He used it, and then I decided I wanted it back, and I took a loss on it when I sold it to my buddy. Then I bought it back. So I've got a lot of way more than 625 in this guy. But, I mean, it's completed. It's exactly what I wanted it to be from the beginning. And I decided I loved it so much I wanted it back. And now I carry it, right? So sometimes that can happen once a project is completed. I just don't consider either of these to be completed yet. You know, I want that fresh out of the box feel. If I decide to go down, you know, the user road and actually decide to use it. But, again... All it's going to be used for is just opening <laughs> packages and envelopes. It's not going to be used for anything epic because that's not really my day-to-day, -day, right? Um, but, yeah, that's essentially the idea with this guy. The XM24, I'm drawn to it because it's so insanely robust. Not that there aren't other knives that are this big and thick and crazy out there. I mean, there are, right? Like, 90% of Medford's line is this thick. But I also prefer, I mean, like, this is kind of got all the aggressive features of something like a Medford, but more Chris Reevy style finishes, right? I mean, I enjoy especially Rick Hinderer's tumbled finish. There are only two finishes I'll go with. I mean, at someday I might go, excuse me, with a, a true DLC. But the Stonewash DLC, which is really hard to find on anything nowadays, and just the standard tumbling. I'm not personally a fan of the working finish, Definitely not a fan, uh, fan of the black wash, which is different from DLC and black stone wash, right? Um, I just really love their tumbling. It just looks beautiful. The way that they do their blades, like these grinds, like the way that the lines come out, especially on the tumbled finishes, right? Everything's also very clicky. Oh, I like that. I like the way that it feels when it flips, right? There's obviously a flaw with the flipper tab. I mean, I understand the function. I've, I've gone over this multiple times. If you, if you think you're about to inform me that there's an issue with the flipper tab and that I, I might not know that and that you're the first person to tell me that, no, I've, I, I guess I'm being sarcastic and kind of condescending here, but I've been aware of that since like the beginning. <laughs> and uh, I've pointed out many times that while the flipper tab is definitely uncomfortable, it, it, it was not designed, you know, first and foremost as the most comfortable means of deployment. It was designed as the finger guard. You can see that it matches up perfectly right here. It keeps your finger in, right? Now, could this be altered to where it could accomplish that and be a little bit less aggressive on the finger? Sure. Could this area back here be knocked down? Like, do we really need that aggressive gym? Sure. At this point, I don't care, though. I'm just a, uh, I'm just a huge hinderer nut, and I've gotten used to it on this guy. I mean, on this guy, it's like I don't even feel it anymore. You know, it just feels so natural. So, is it a problem that, you know, maybe could be fixed in future generations or at least altered in future generations to be more comfortable for people who aren't used to it? Yeah, absolutely, right? Um, but that kind of goes out the window with a knife like this, a knife that the idea is to make it into a project. Truthfully, you know, it's like, I'm going to talk about this, I think, in depth on another episode where I discuss why we collect, why we add to our collections. Right? I mean, there's a lot of different philosophies Lots of different points of view. I've always said that the knife community is largely made up of three different core groups. The users, the collectors, and the enthusiasts. I'm not going to go in depth on that because I actually have a video where I discuss that exactly. And you can check that out in my discussion and controversy playlist. But I'm going to talk about this more in depth when I do another upload as to why I, why I collect, why certain knives stay, why certain knives go. 
why certain knives get used and why certain knives get you know don't get used. Um, and I'm going to talk more in depth about that. And the truth is, is that I want to build up a, uh, I want to build up a collection that I can pass down. And very specifically, I, I do want certain knives to not be used. That's, that's just my way of thinking. Um, and you know, we all get to think how we want when we spend our own money on this stuff. Also, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really affected by, 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 uh, peer pressure. Um, I mean, at this point, you know, with the channel being how it is, all of my content is being presented to, I think it, the channel averages about 25,000 views a day. So however many, it's not always 25,000 people. Some people are watching more than one video, but a lot of people, right? What I do is give my honest thoughts, my honest opinions um, to my audience at all times, right? I respect other people's opinions about certain things, but when it comes to my own stuff, yeah, I've been this way for a decade. I'm just, I'm just not going to change. This is the, this is the way that I like to enjoy this stuff. Certain knives, like the XM24, it's really not a, as mu as capable as it is. You know, there are definitely people out there who could make use of the XM24 day to day, uh, much better than I could. It would make much more sense, right? Um, and again, it's not about the weight. An additional one ounce, like anybody, you know, my my. My five-year-old could carry that around if he wanted to. <laughs> it's not heavy. It's just an awkward item depending on... Like if you're wearing sweatpants or you're wearing fitted pants, the XM24 is freaking awkward, right? I mean, you can, you can you know, convince yourself maybe slowly over the course of a couple of months that, you know, it, it's fine. But, I mean, anybody who's... If you've been used to carrying something like the Spyderco Para 3 and you're wearing fitted khakis to work every day and you all of a sudden transition to the XM24 and you try to say that you don't notice a difference, you're lying to yourself. There is a difference, right? Both knives are going to get used for the same thing. One's just substantially more cumbersome. That's the way that I approach this. I much prefer to just enjoy these things as the, the, project, the, you know, the project knives that they are. And they will be exactly that. Um, there's no, you know, at this point, there's no... There's no change in my mind about that. At some point, you know, maybe just for fun, I'll buy another XM24 and use it and carry it and kind of give my thoughts again after having, you know, it's truthfully been, gosh, when I bought that XM24, I think it was six years ago. It's been six years, you know, but I've just come to kind of solidify in my preferences and it's just not here. It's not a nine and a quarter inch knife. It's about an eight inch knife or something around there. Seven and a half to eight and a quarter. I kind of like that territory. So stay tuned because I think this guy's going to, the final, um, the final build's going to come to fruition on this guy much faster than this guy. And I'm really excited uh, to bring that to you guys and show it to you when it's finally done. Um, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. The, um, the XM24 Harpoon Spanto is a Knife Center exclusive. I'm sure it's a lot of people going, I want. I wanted information on how beneficial that blade shape over, over other blade shapes was. <laughs> Sorry. Um, these are so thick and meaty and robust. I mean, on an XM24, I think it's kind of a given that these are not going to be performance slicers. These, uh, The blade shape is designed as a super durable breacher, I guess, uh, folding pry bar kind of thing. There's elements for users, and there are definitely elements for enthusiasts. 100%. Those elements are present. And collectors, right? Anybody trying to say Rick Hinder doesn't make knives for the enthusiasts or the collectors? <laughs> I don't think they know what they're looking at. But at the same time, the knives are also meant to be used. That's what's so fun is they can appeal to anybody, you know? And if not the XM, then something else, um, something else in the line, for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, the Harpoon Spanto... It's not any thinner behind the edge than the Spanto, and the Spanto is the thickest geometry of any of the blade shapes through Hinderer. Um, and considering this is the largest version of it, the thickest on the spine that he makes, this is the most robust. These two are the most robust geometries out of the Hinderer line. If you're wanting an XM24 and you want a performance slicer, it's not these guys. The spear point's probably going to be a little bit better. The swedge spear is going to be a little bit better. The Warncliffe is probably going to be a little bit better. Uh, I know in the past there have been slicers. I've not seen an XM24 slicer for a long time. Truthfully, the skinny XM24s, 
Um, and if they ever did a slicer, that would be your performance XM24. But these guys, I mean, it's meaningless to talk about the benefit, the pros and cons because they're so thick, right? These are these are meant to be, you know, items of. Um, they're essentially incredibly durable folding cutting tools, but the geometry is so far beyond what we expect from a normal folding knife, right? Really thin. It's capable of doing a lot of stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing with a folding knife anyway, which is why I argue that there's a lot of extra enthusiast elements in these things. Um, but yeah, man, I love this. The thing, uh, it's still locking up nice and early. Blade centering even after the scales, just absolutely dead on. Love that. And as you guys have seen, the action is totally fall shut. Same way with this guy. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, incredibly fall shut action. The uh, tip is still centered. This guy has settled in at about, I don't know, 35%. Uh, it got to that point, and that's just where it stayed. I love these things. No part of me. I mean, my experience from using the... I mean, here's the thing. This guy, there's nothing I won't use this for. Like, you know, am I going to huck it across the asphalt on purpose? No, that's stupid, right? But am I going to shy away from, like, pulling a staple up or, you know, doing a little bit of prying or squeezing around? No. Same thing with the settle-in point right here. This guy gets used. This guy gets bumped into stuff and thrown around, you know, no big deal. They're solid. Thing is still centered, still locking up where it should be. It's great. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Love it. Awesome stuff. So, anyways, I think that's all the more this really needs to be. I just wanted to talk about the XM24 Harpoon Spanto. Ooh, if you missed that flipper tab, that hurts. Oh, that's really all I wanted to talk about, which is kind of my 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 philosophy with knives like this, and why you know why I treat certain knives different. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will link hinderer knives and accessories and everything right down below. So you guys can check that stuff out if you want to, uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.